Welcome back to our civic engagement and civic infrastructure to advanced health equity workshop through the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering and Medicine. I'm Mira Levinson, a professor of education at Harvard University, and I am really honored to be hosting our youth panel uh, for the next half hour in which we are going to hear from two experienced youth council members from Gonzales, California, Isabel Mendoza and Aidan Cervantes. Just to introduce them to you briefly, um, Isabel, Men Isabel Mendoza is a former youth commissioner uh, from last year and a former Gonzales Youth Council member from 2015 to 18. Uh, she's currently a sophomore at Santa Clara University and an intern for the City of Gonzales, California Community Engagement and Strategic Partnerships. She's studying psychology with the hope of becoming a clinical psychologist for children and adolescents or of pursuing a career in the community similar to what she's doing as an intern for Gonzales. So as you can hear in her own bio, she is connecting uh, civic uh, infrastructure with uh, concerns about health equity. Um, and she can tell you more about her work as she presents. Aidan Cervantes is a graduating senior at Gonzales High School in California, as well as one of the current youth commissioners leading the Gonzales Youth Council. This fall, he's going to be attending UCLA where he's going to major in public affairs. And he hopes one day to come back to his county and work in city or county government. He's also a big fan of sports and comics and manga. Um, so the way that this next half hour is going to work is that we will hear from Isabel and Aiden about their work with the Gonzales Youth Council as a way of helping us get into thinking about the really um, novel and important concept of civic infrastructure and how civic infrastructure impacts um, civic health and with that also public health and health equity. I will then lead a conversation with them for about 10 minutes or so but we will also be keeping an eye on the Q&A that you can access just below the uh, video of this uh, to put in your questions. And we will make sure to reserve some time to include questions from you in the audience. But with that, I'm going to hand it over to Isabel and Aiden. Hello, it's great to be here. Thank you for having us. Um, so we're gonna begin by just talking a little bit about the Gonzalez Youth Council. So next slide, please. The Gonzales Youth Council is the official youth advisory to the key governing bodies, the City of Gonzales and Gonzales Unified School District. Um, this began with a partnership between the two bodies in 2006 and a commitment to formal youth leadership development in 2013. The first youth commissioners were established in 2014 where they learned sort of the in and outs of, of government. And in 2015, the official Youth Council was established and it consisted of students grades six through 12. Um, since then, we've done a lot in our community and our school. Um, some of the most notable projects have been the No Straw November campaign in 2017, where we discouraged the use of plastic straws and encouraged the use of paper straws, for instance. Um, as well as our mental health project, which has been ongoing since 2020 during the pandemic. Um, so we're going on our seventh generation, and I can confidently say that I think the GYC will be continuing to do great things. Um, we have actually also supported a couple of other communities, um, such as Soledad, California, in establishing their own versions of their youth council. Next slide, please. To talk about a little bit about the civic infra infra infrastructures of the GYC, we just want to give some basic knowledge to help explain it further so everyone has a good idea and is able to ask um, any questions they have. So the youth commissioner position is basically the equivalent of a club president in the sense where they run the club and they are not the same thing as a youth council member. Um, the process of becoming a youth commissioner um, is you either sign up depending on the year the, the youth commissioners have a sign up that is sent out to the public for um, ages or rather say grades, sophomore to being a senior. Um, and if not, you're recommended by one of the past youth commissioners. The youth council member process is a little different. You, we send out a application um, towards the beginning of the school year. Um, anyone interested fills out a, would be a Google form or paper application and um, they're selected and they're given an opportunity to have an interview with the current youth commissioners. 
Um, everyone is accepted. I don't think we've ever denied anyone just because we want to give the opportunity to any students who are interested. The roles and responsibilities of a youth council member, however, are very different than a youth commissioner. Um, a lot of times it's attending meetings, helping with um, public events, um, community service, and helping with larger projects. The youth commissioner roles and responsibilities have to do with um, setting up everything. We create the agendas, we run the meetings, um, we help keep that partnership between the city and school by meeting with officials and adult allies throughout the city and school district of Gonzales. Um, we are actually the official student representatives for the city council meeting that we attend every city council meeting every month. We have our own um, agenda item where we present out. And we also have a say sometimes in certain um, things that have to do with the youth. Um, it's very, we're very grateful to be on the city and we are able to represent our um, student body and um, youth body throughout Gonzales. We, um, as of 2020, we are not the official representatives for the school board anymore. That um, kind of switched when the school decided they want to have an official um, Gonzales High School School Board of Representatives. So even though we're no longer on the school board and representing them, we um, are in a recurring agenda item. So we present out all the projects and um, things we do throughout the year. And um, it's great. So that's our present and past roles. And this is just a little bit to help you guys better understand the GYC's ins and outs and how they work. So that's our last slide. We, was, I know it's very short. We just wanted to give you guys a basic idea of how the GYC works, the past, present, and future roles that we play. And um, yes, so we can go on to the questions and we hope you guys, we hope we'll be able to answer all your questions. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Isabel and Aiden, uh, for that. Uh, it's very helpful just to understand the structure. What I'd love uh, for our um, audience uh, to learn more about now is actually some of the substance of what you guys have achieved. So, Isabel, you mentioned the um, uh, straw uh, initiative. I know that you guys also had a big, and you briefly mentioned mental health, with, which I know was uh, has been a very large initiative of the Gonzales Youth Council. Can you guys tell us a bit more about that? I know that you know parents and educators and policymakers and so forth around the country are extremely concerned about youth mental health right now uh, coming out of the pandemic. And so I'd love to hear more about what um, what the what started that and then what you've done about it and where you've gone with it. I can speak on this. Um, so in the beginning um, with the pandemic, we realized that it, it was very hard for us and we wondered how it was for everybody else. And so what we did was we teamed up with the Cal State Monterey Bay um, team, which consisted of Dr. Lovell, Selena Espinoza and Claudia Rocha. And we created a survey for middle school and high school youth um, just kind of getting, it was initially to get a pulse check of how students were because we were struggling so much with um, balancing our responsibilities at home on top of schoolwork, on top of trying to have some self care in there and take care of our anxieties over COVID. Um, so that's what we did. We had the survey, we analyzed all of the, all of the data, qualitative and quantitative in collaboration with the CSUMB team we created a couple of presentations and created an ask to um, elected officials that we have more mental health resources within our community because in the beginning, we only had one social worker for our entire district of three schools. And we thought that just is not enough, especially during this rough time. So what we did was we had that out and we actually have two new social workers um, we are still continuing to look over the data and still continuing to build on this project just to ensure that our students are getting the resources that they need. Aiden, have, what have you seen? You are currently a student at Gonzales High School. Um, have, you, have you seen changes thanks to uh, GYC's initiative around mental health? Um, yeah, so just to talk a little bit about that, um, obviously doing the whole survey really impacted um, not just the school, but the community parents and um, adult allies were able to kind of see what was really going on. 
Uh, mental health is not really something spoken about within our community a lot with um, even parents don't really talk about mental health um, with their kids. So kind of just seeing that even for other students, seeing that uh, group of kids, like we were, we were literally just teenagers and um, working with other adults to kind of present on how the youth are feeling. It was um, really inspiring to a lot of other kids. And um, I've even seen kids who went and um, went out of their way to seek mental health um, assistance after, you know, looking at the presentation and, you know, seeing that they weren't the only ones. I think that's what one of our main goals was showing students that they weren't the only ones feeling this way. And that we had a lot, even though we're a small community, a large portion of the students were feeling um, alone and um, scared. So after this whole presentation, we've seen a lot of changes within our school district, not just the high school, but the middle school and even um, some help in the elementary school. And obviously it's at a slow start right now, but I believe in a couple, two or three years, um, it'll be the way we want to, we want it and we'll, they'll have a lot of help um, with mental health. Great, thank you. That's super inspiring. Um, and I think one of the things that is inspiring about it uh, and a good actually exemplar about uh, this conception of civic infrastructure and the connection with um, public health and health equity is that both you've made changes politically through civic engagement. You actually um, tripled the number of social workers that you had. Um, and But also it was actually through the process, it sounds like, of say data gathering, say disseminating the survey, sharing your results, that it sounds as if you also engaged in some attitudinal shifts and helped uh, your peers see themselves not as individuals with a problem, but as members of a collective that were, uh, who were understandably, um, say in this case, suffering something that is itself collective and systemic rather than just something that they needed to feel bad about themselves. And that I think is huge when we think about civic engagement is how we can take things that otherwise we feel as individuals are our fault and our problem and shift them over to start thinking about how does the system as a whole how is it in some cases hurting us? And then how can we collectively work uh, actually to help ourselves uh, collectively and individually? Uh, so I'm super excited about that. Can you, do you have one more example, like a real win that you've experienced? And then also I'm curious if, to hear each of you talk something about a challenge that you've experienced uh, with the Gonzales Youth Commission. So Aiden, why don't you start by talking about another uh, win and a challenge and then we'll turn to Isabel. Um, and do you mean win by like a win? Like, Something like, where you, you feel as if you achieved change through your work. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So I guess another project to kind of talk about was this project we did with this year's youth council. Um, obviously being everything was online and being in COVID, it was a lot harder to achieve and um, accomplish projects and goals that we had throughout this year. Unlike, um, let's say, with Isabel's year where everything was in person, um, students were able to gather. We really just gathered over Zoom. And of course, um, you know, Zoom fatigue is a real thing and students being online, it was really hard for them to actually go to another meeting after going to school for four hours or so. Um, but one of the projects we did and we were really proud of was a project where we set up, um, depending on the day, four to eight youth council members would go and um, help with a class of first graders at our local elementary school. Um, this was one of the first projects we really had set up um, and accomplished and had people actually doing it. So towards the end of the year, about four to five, depending on the day, um, youth council members would go into um, the first graders at LaGuardia in elementary, that's our elementary school in Gonzales, they would go and help out a teacher's class and they'd be put into breakout rooms with about five to six students, like first graders. And they would help them with their um, English, with their math, with their science, just depending on what they were doing that day. And um, at first, you know, we were just like, hey, this, you know, it seems cool. It's pretty cool to go work with stuff. But after a lot of um, council members came back and they were like, hey, like, this is really fun. Like, um, you know, they were excited to speak on it. And it was one of the first times throughout the year that we were able to have students be excited for something within the Gonzales Youth Council, just because everything was just so like, I don't know, 
if we're being real, it was like a, lo a lot of it was boring. A lot of portions were boring, just kind of sitting on the computer and like, you know, doing the same thing over and over. So, I mean, just seeing them um, light up, talking about their experiences in the first grade class was, it was a win for us. So I think that was one of the other, another win we had. Um, and what was the next part of the question? Actually, I'll, uh, let's stick with the win and the achievement, and then we'll come back to the question about okay. challenges. Uh, Isabel, the, what is something else you'd like to highlight from your time on the Youth Commission or from your time right now as an intern, um, thinking about uh, something that uh, youth have managed to achieve within the city? I think the mental health project is one of my favorite projects just because of the real impact that we made. Um, I remember posting on social media because that's another way that we kind of engaged um, the youth and we would have these little pulse checks of, oh, how are you feeling today? Type this emoji if you're feeling a certain way and so on. And seeing that a lot of people kind of gradually were engaging in the different activities that we had put on and engaging in our posts it just made me really happy because we're really making change and we saw through the presentations that many people were excited about this project and how um, they're better informed on how to deal with certain things within their schools. Um, I believe that would be my big win. Great, thanks. So now moving on to challenges. Uh, uh, so in one of the challenges actually you just mentioned was just getting bored, um, which, and, and just like, it, it's true that civic engagement is also often really, really dull, because it's so slow to make change, and you have to sit through so many meetings, and, um, and, and especially over the last year, it can be like death by a thousand Zoom boxes. So one of the things that you described was um, that the connection actually, say, with first graders and seeing the concrete change and making some relationships uh, made a big difference in helping people be excited. But can you t talk about either one of the other challenges that you faced? Um, over this past year, or I know that when we were having our prep call, one of the things we discussed was that like when things went online, it, it felt as if suddenly like it shifted to sort of adultist norms and adults looking to each other for solutions rather than looking to youth for solutions. What is one of the challenges that you've really been wrestling with and do you have any guidance for how to um, address it? Um, yes, yeah, so I guess one of the challenges um, we face as youth council is that the the limitations we have, um, although we have a lot of connections throughout the city and with the adults and stuff, um, kind of just the limitations that are put on us, we can't really do things that like, per se, like a city can do. Um, I mean, obviously we know that because we're a youth council, but you know, if we wanted to do a project, it's like, we have to get a lot of things approved and um, we have to kind of, set up everything we don't we don't know as many people as we want to so setting up for say like the mental health project it was kind of hard at first because we had to like there's a lot of steps and hoops to jump through and um i think it became a lot harder being online because um if we want to go talk to like an adult i like throughout the school without the school or throughout the city we couldn't just like go and walk to city hall and like be like hey do you think you could set up a meeting right now we have to actually like email them, then we have to find somewhere within our busy schedules of being students and then having jobs um, to set up a Zoom call. And uh, I think a problem we faced a lot was emails just never being responded to. We would send out an email to someone in the city or in the school district, and we wouldn't get a response for almost a full month sometimes. And I get that, it, being online, it's just like really hard and stuff, but, um, there was kind of a lack of communication. I think that's one of the main struggles we faced this year, at least, was a lack of communication. We would email um, people and we wouldn't get back. Um, we set up Zoom links sometimes, and there was a lot of times where we would set up Zoom meetings with the adults, and then they would um, cancel on the last minute, like literally five minutes before the Zoom meeting would start, they'd cancel because they had another meeting scheduled. Um, so I think it was just time management and lack of communication was a challenge um, that I believe um, past youth commissioners and youth councils have faced, but it was really difficult this year being online and um, trying to communicate with everyone. Thanks, Aiden. Isabel, what would you highlight as a challenge? Yeah, I agree with Aiden on the lack of communication um, and also just kind of 
fitting into everybody's schedules. Everyone was so busy during the pandemic with different meetings about different things. So that was a struggle. Um, I also believe that motivation was sort of a struggle just because of Zoom fatigue and also being isolated and being at home, not really seeing anybody was hard. I mean, for me personally, I was like, do I really have to go to this meeting? Do I really have to take notes at this time? Um, but it, yeah, it was, it was a struggle, but I think solutions to that is remembering your mission and your vision and just remembering like you're doing this for change. You're trying to make a positive difference. And if you have that passion and that drive and you keep it consistent in your mind, I think that you can definitely overcome those obstacles. And as for lack of communication, I just think that getting together and having little check-ins um, every week or however often you, you may be able to, um, I think that will also very uh, help a lot. Um, some of the things that you guys have said uh, have raised some really practical questions from the audience who are clearly uh, thinking, oh, maybe we should try to set this up in our own communities. So um, just some really practical questions. What is the time commitment uh, from both uh, for both youth council members and especially for commissioners uh, each week? And then do you have any kinds of incentives for participating besides just public spiritedness? Are you paid? Do you get uh, service learning credit, et cetera. Aiden, why don't you take that? Um, yes, yeah, so, so the time commitment, it's a its a big commitment. So before you even apply, you wanna make sure that you have the time throughout the, cause the, the whole kind of commitment starts in the summer. Um, the process of like being elected and interviewed and such starts like towards the end of the school in about May-ish, June-ish. So the actual like job starts, it's a whole year. So it starts from about July to, and ends about that, that June of next year. Um, so you wanna make sure you don't have any other large commitments. This year online, we were able to, you know, they were a lot more flexible to other commitments, but um, I was on Zoom for maybe at least four to eight hours a day during the summer. Um, with wow. the youth council because of the process and the whole like um, getting ready for the school year. Yeah, um, started in July and we would have back to back to back meetings like every single day we were meeting with um, people throughout our city and our school. Then we were having trainings around how to like, um, you know, run a council, certain stuff we need to know. Um, and then once the school year got there, it kind of dulled down, you know, slowed down a little bit. We had meetings about two times a month. Um, so it's a, it's a big commitment because other than meetings, you know, you're going to, um, city council meetings, you're going to school board meetings and the school board meetings are very long. <laughs> they're maybe about sometimes get up to five hours long. So yeah, they're very long meetings to just sit through. Um, but they're very interesting sometimes just depending on the day city council meetings are about three hours sometimes, I believe. Um, so it's a, it's a large commitment. So, you know, time management is very useful and you know learning that skill and managing your time is great um but for a youth council member it's it's a lot less of a commitment it's kind of just showing up to meetings participating in any, any community activities being online this year we didn't have as many community activities towards the end of the year we started to have more where students could um show up and help with um certain activities throughout the city in the school but um i mean it's it's a large it's a large commitment and, you know. Um, Are you compensated yeah. for it besides, you know, the the feeling of virtue? Like I, I know that the city of Gonzales has put some resources into it because in our preparatory uh, call on Friday, I met a, a city employee who was sort of your liaison and support, but how, I mean, you were working a half to a full-time job over the summer and it sounds like, you know, close to that over the year too. Yes, so the youth commissioner. Um, so I believe we were given a. Oh. Isabel, go oh, for sorry it. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> um, so you're given a, I believe, like a. Oh, yeah, yeah. You no, go ahead, Aiden. Keep keep talking. Go for it. Sorry, Aiden. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't. Uh. All right. So as a youth. As a youth commissioner, you're given like a throughout your work through the summer, you're given like a, a stipend of I'm not sure. It's kind of like a real job. So you're paid. You have to you know fill in your 
um, hours and stuff, and you're paid based on your hours. Don't remember exactly how much it was, but I mean, it was over, I believe, like a thousand dollars or something. Um, and I mean, it's, I mean, it wasn't really about the money, I mean, but it was more like the whole experience and stuff. And, you know, you can, other than money, I mean, you can put that on college applications. Not every city has a Gonzalez or a youth council per se that does the work that we kind of do. So, um, you know, you get rewarded in the experiences and the stuff you do. Okay. Isabel, anything you'd want to add to that? No. Okay. Um, so there, are, we have about four minutes left. Um, and uh, there are a couple of questions in the chat related to it, uh, specifically to issues of equity. Um, one is this issue of equity of participation within the youth council itself. Um, so, uh, I mean, yes, you can have the, um, the reason to participate is you're making a real difference and you can add it to your college resume, which is great. But also, you know, you may be nervous, you, uh, English may not be your first language. You may in fact need to work a job that, uh, you know, where you have reliable hours, et cetera. Uh, so I'm curious about how you think about equity within the youth council. And then there's also a, a question about how the youth council can uh, contribute to equity overall, either uh, equity in confronting educational disparities or equity as we uh, consider, say, the expenditures of the $181 billion in funding for schools. Um, so I would love to hear your thoughts about how you feel either the Gonzales Youth Council has been um, effective in achieving internal equity or effective in promoting equity uh, within your school system or your city. Isabel, do you want to take it? first. Yeah, definitely. So when recruiting for the Gonzalez Youth Council, we try to get a diverse group. We don't just want the ASB leaders or the people that are, you know, really out there. We try to strive and get as many people as we can, different personalities. And I think that the GYC has been incredibly diverse over the years. Um, so that's kind of how we do it. We encourage those who are kind of quiet. Um, I think equity overall, um, so the GYC has helped in numerous ways with that. We have helped with education, um, such as the tutoring that we did we, that we have done not only um, during eight and zero, but also in my year in eighth grade. And um, we have also helped with um, the hotspot distributions. A couple of the GYC members have been there for distributions for um, the free hotspots that we had over the pandemic. Um, that was a project that has been in the works for about a decade almost. And it finally came into fruition right before um, the pandemic hit. And so that really helped out um, a lot of families as well. Great, thanks, Isabel. Aiden, is there anything you'd wanna to add to that? Um, no, I believe that we, we've always tried to be very diverse. Um, something we lack in the BYC is the male to female ratio. It's always kind of more females a lot of the years. And I believe um, I may be the third um, male youth commissioner in almost 10 years or something, how, however long the youth council has been. Yeah. So that's one of the things we always try to um, recruit more males. Um, it's hard sometimes, but, um, you know, that's something we, um, that's one of our challenges as a youth commission, as a youth council sometimes. Um, but we're always striving to encourage more students to join. And, you know, we never have a cap of how many students can join or never try to reject anyone because we always want to give everyone the opportunity. Terrific. Um, thank you so much to both of you for your insights um, about the Gonzales Youth Council and for your service um, on the Youth Council and as commissioners um, and now um, Isabel in your role uh, with the city more broadly, as you're also, you know, um, a sophomore at Santa Clara, etc. Um, uh, this was a really inspiring way to kick off our uh, broader session on civic infrastructure. 